Yo, yo, yo. You know what today is? Well, of course you know, because everybody been teaching already. So, praise God. It's Word of Wisdom Wednesday. I'll wait for a couple people. Wait for a couple folks, mate, to get in here. And we can chop it up real quick. Y'all trickle in anyway. I'm gonna just get started. Uh, title, something real simple, real smooth. It's called just just walk straight. Just walk straight. You know, it's all about glorifying God and pleasing Him at the end of the day. So you can't let nobody get you off your square. You can't let nobody uh, get you off the path of righteousness. Just walk straight. You know, when we start to uh, take heed to things that ain't necessarily in the Bible, we could get thrown off. Our own emotions could throw us off. You know, when we start to, you know, base our understanding off of uh, our own feelings and emotions, we could get thrown off. You know what I mean? So, real, real uh, simple lesson we're just going to deal with. Just walk straight. Just, just walk straight. Just walk right. And uh, we're just going to touch on a couple scripts and then boom. But you got you to gotta understand, you know, when you live in, when you live in righteously, you know, you're going to get opposition because that's what happened to Jesus. And if we walk into his steps, then that's, that's going to happen to you. But we can't get thrown off. We can't turn, veer to the left or turn to the right. We just got to keep, just, just walk straight. So that's the title of the lesson. That's really what we're going to deal with. It should be uh, Lord willing. It's really plain and simple. Lord willing. He's going to get an understanding. And uh, it should help you on your walk. So let's go into Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter real quick. Hebrews 10. And let's see. Hebrews 10 and verse 24. Hebrews 10 and 24. 40 cal. What it do? So this is Hebrews 10 and 24. He said, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So that's what we should be doing. And that's what we try to do. Every, every word of wisdom Wednesday is provoke you unto love and unto good works. Trying to strengthen your relationship with the most high so you get everlasting life. So we bounce we, we go over word, the word of God because this is able to save you. This is, your, this is where your everlasting life comes from. So let's go into Matthew 11 chapter because you got to walk straight. But you know you should know this. In Matthew 18, he said offenses will come. You just don't want to be the one who's doing the offending. Because he said, what will be to you by whom offenses come? Let's, but let's go into Matthew 11. Matthew 11. This is Matthew 11. In uh, verse 6, Matthew 11, in verse 6, he said, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Why you got to say that? Because you could get offended walking this walk. Especially if you don't understand that people will come against you. you Everybody not going to like you because you serving God. That's just not going to happen. Because they killed the creator. The creator of heaven and earth who did no wrongdoing. Show nothing but love to the people, healed many people, raised a, a brother from the dead, uh, healed a blind man, brought sight to the blind, and they found, they, they still killed him. So if you're walking in, the, in, in, Jesus, in the steps of Jesus Christ, or, or the Christ, whatever you call him, it's all the same person, y'all saves, y'all sure, whatever you want to call him, we know that if you walk in his steps, offense is going to come. And that could get you off the path of righteousness. That could get you off the straight path. So that's why the lesson is titled, Just Walk Straight. Just walk right. Just, just stay on. Just stay on the path. Don't let nobody get you off your rocker. Don't let nobody get you off your square. Because he said, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And, in, in order, and, and this is the best way not to be offended in him, is to deal with the word of God. As you read, you have to read and study the Bible for yourself. Or you could be offended 
by some that ain't even based off the scriptures. Just somebody else's idea or, or emotions or, or whatever, or tradition. You got to make sure you're reading the Bible for yourself. You really do. Because you can be offended by something that ain't even in the Bible. So you should walk straight. And then walking in your straightness, that's dictated by the word of God, which is able to keep you in line. Let's go into, uh, let's try 2 Timothy. Let's try there. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Let's see. 2 Timothy. Like I said, this should be a real smooth and easy, quick, quick lesson. You got to walk straight. That's it. Walk straight. And then 2 Timothy, I'm sorry. I just, 2 Timothy, the second chapter, I believe. Let's see. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. No, 4. 4. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 and verse. No, am I bugging? Am I bugging? Hold on. Wait. Hold on. It might be 1 Timothy 4. Am I, am I tripping like this? 1 Timothy 4. Yeah, 1 Timothy 4. I'm sorry. 1 Timothy 4. All right. Let's get it. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 6. 1 Timothy 4 and 6. He said, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. So, again, we started off with provoke one, one another unto love and good works, right? So he's saying the brethren, if thou, if, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse profane and old wise fable. So if it ain't in the coming out of the Bible, refuse it. Especially if, if somebody ain't coming out of the old and new, you should already be uh, leery of that. Because he told you in what, Matthew 13, somewhere around there, that a good scribe brings things forth both out of the new and the old. But he said, but refuse profane and old wise fables because traditions of men creep into the word of God. And if folks start to believe based off the tradition, that's how we should live. That's not a straight. That's not walking straight. Straight is the word of God, straight up and down. He said, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So that show you that tradition or, you know, old wives' tales, that ain't necessarily, that ain't, that ain't godliness at all. It may be a good saying, but it's not godliness if it ain't coming out of the word of God. It just, it could be a good saying though. But if it's an old wild tale of what you're, what's been passed down to generation to generation, that don't make it true. Verse 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. So if you're living in a godly manner, that's profitable unto all things. You good in every hood. If you live in godly, you good with the Lord, really. You good all over the map. Because it's profitable unto all things and all walks and manner of life. Living godly, that's good. He said, for bodily exercise profit of little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So if you, if you live in godly, you profit in this life too and the next life. Wow. Let's go into uh, Deuteronomy 28 because Mikael put me on this morning when I had a uh, rap with him. And it's all from the Lord, so let's read that because he said if you, if you live in godliness, you're profitable now and the next life. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. And let's see. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 10. No, no, 9, I think. Hold on. No, no, no. Let's start at verse 6. Okay. Verse 5. He said, Blessed shalt thou, shalt thou be, blessed shalt be thy basket in thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. How is this happening? Verse 1, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently 
unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if you're living in a godly manner, it's profitable unto all things, and it profits you in this life and the next one. So wait a minute, we don't have to be cursed because we Israelites? Oh, we, 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 we curse, we are cursed people, so that means as a whole or, or individually, we all curse no matter what. That don't line up with the Bible. He's saying if you keep his commandments, if you walk straight, then you're going to be blessed, right? We can't change the scriptures, can we? That's the good thing about God. The scriptures do, don't, don't never change. That's why we can walk straight. That's why when folks come in at you from left and right, that don't affect none of, nothing. It should not, just walk straight. Have boldness in Christ. Line, if it's in the book, we're going to go with it. If it's not in the book, I don't, wanna, I don't care. I'm going to tell you about me. I don't care what anybody got to say. Please read it to me, please. Please read what you're talking about, please. Or don't, or don't say nothing. And that, that's why people don't call, because they know what time it is. Deuteronomy 28 and 6. He said, blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Wow. Then we read, godliness is profitable in all things. So you can be blessed where, wherever you go in. You go in, you blessed when you go in. When you go out, you bless. So man, you bless on the inside, and then when you walk outside, you blessed. I guess that's the true term of outstanding. You outside and you blessed. You outstanding. Oh, you outstanding. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. If you want to be blessed, can't nobody get you off, your, off of this straight and narrow path? You got to have trust in what you read out of the Bible. But if you don't read, how are you, you going to trust in it? That's why he tell you in, 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 in Jeremiah 17, Psalms 118, curses a man, who put his trust in man. And then in Romans 14, I believe, somewhere, he said, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. How are you going to be persuaded in your own mind if you're not even thinking for yourself? You ain't even got nothing to bounce nothing off of because your perception of God or your perception of righteousness is taught, taught to you by a man because you don't read nothing. You can't even be persuaded in your own mind. You can't even think for yourself. That's not good. He said in verse 9, The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. The Lord has a straight way for you to walk. All you got to do, just walk straight. Don't let nobody trick you or try to make you feel bad for walking straight. That can't work. Especially if you got, a holy, if you got the Holy Ghost in you, if you got God in you. What nobody say should get you off the straight and narrow. Nobody should be able to affect you. A brother told me one time, he had came at me with some type of stuff somebody was saying. And I didn't want to, I chopped that up so quick. He was like, dang. It's like, man, he's like, your spider sense is going, you don't go for nothing. I said, no, sir. You know why? Because I read. You know how to stop from being tricked? You, you know how to stay on the straight and narrow? Read the Bible so the Lord can show you. Don't let nobody trick you, you crazy. Eternal life is at stake. And all people of the earth, verse 10, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. You know when they're afraid of you? When you walk in the straight and narrow, can't nobody get you off that path. They can come, with, come at you with all type of BS. That's uh, bad stuff. And it ain't going to get you, they're going to be afraid because you're not going to transgress. They're going to be like, oh, man, I ain't, mess with, I, ain't gonna, I ain't mess with her. I ain't mess with him. Because you're going to stay within the lines of the, law, of the law of God. You're going to stay on the straight and narrow. You're going to stay in the commandments. Now folks got to come up with stuff. Folks got to come up with stuff that don't even make no dang sense. They got to come up with stuff that don't add up. That's a shame, ain't it? But that could get you off your rocker. That's why the Lord said, blesses the individual who is not offended in me. When you walking in that straight and narrow, when you walking in the word of God, and you are sure in that, you're only sure if you can read it with your own eye. It's hard to be sure when somebody else has told you something. 
Then you run up on a person who really read their Bible and now you embarrassed and all that. You, you should read for yourself. <laughs> you should really read for yourself. He said, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. What? So I guess the Sunday folks do got a little bit, right? You could be prosperous. And, you know, I'm going to probably teach that on Saturday on the Sabbath, Lord willing. He said, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. All right, let's go right back to that first Timothy, the fourth chapter. Because he said that godliness is profitable in all things. It'll profit you in this life and the next one to come. Because the commandments are ordained, are ordained unto life. Excuse me. But let's go back to uh, 1 Timothy 4. And the title is Just Walk Straight, man. Just walk straight. If you got faith in what you read, just walk straight. Ain't nobody get you riled up or nothing. Just walk straight. Nobody, just walk straight. It's real simple. Verse 9, he said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. Wait a minute. You can suffer, you can suffer uh, reproach because you trust in the living God. Wow. So, so somebody can have something negative, look at you negatively for trusting in God. See, when Daniel was told he couldn't pray no more, right? He knew the declaration was signed. Did he go high? No, he prayed as he did a four times. But people could have been looking at Dan like, man, all you had to do was close your door, brother. All you had to do was hide in the closet, brother. Because you could be, folks could be reproaching you for trusting in the living God. You can't let that, you can't let that make you not stay on the straight and narrow with God. You can't lose your zeal because of how folks look at your trust in God. You can't, you can't lose that. You had Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, right? All they had to do was bow for two seconds to the statue. Or they was going to burn. All the brother, oh, you know, people probably say, oh, man, why y'all going too hard, man? It's not that you could have just bowed for two seconds, brother. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. You can't let no feelings get involved in, in, in none of this. No emotions involved. It got to be straight book. That's how you stay on the straight and narrow. That's how you just walk straight. Because can't nobody move you. And then they're going to fear you. They're going to leave you alone. For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach. The Holy Ghost give you boldness, if you didn't know. In Acts chapter 4, Peter, John was out there. They was trying to say something against him. They spake with boldness. Matter of fact, go to Psalms 44 real quick. Psalms 44. You better walk straight and narrow. You better just walk straight. You better just walk right. Because if you let emotions and all that creep in, you end up taking a mark. You don't want to do that. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Psalms 44 and 6. No, no. Psalms 44 and 4. He said, Thou art my king, O God. Who is the king? The God, God is the king. That's it. All the, ain't no king but God, ultimately. We know David coming back, but... Christ is the king. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. Who's going to deliver you? God is. Who is your king? God is. You can read Hosea 13 on your own. Through thee will we push down our enemies. He said through thee, through our king, God, we're going to push to our enemies. Through thy name will we tread them under that rise up against us. So what are you getting off your straight and narrow path because of somebody rose up against you? Why? Why? That don't make no sense. You push through them, through the word of God. That's it. For I will not, in verse 6, for I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. We don't get in no physical, carnal weapons or none of that. Word of God going to do just enough. Try it out. Verse 8, he said, in God we boast all the day long. And praise thy name forever. 
In God, we boast all the day long. So can't nobody get you off your straight and narrow if you trust in God. You boast, you make your boast in God. You're going to stand up for God. Even to the point folks will be looking at you crazy. Man, you could have did it a different way, sir. You could have did No, no. What God tell me to do? All right. So we understand. Psalms 119. Let's go there. We're going to come back. We're going to go back to Timothy. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. In verse. Matter of fact. Yeah. Psalms 119. And 161. And again, this, you know, I let the Spirit guide me through this and give me a title. And then he put the scriptures together for me and I give it to y'all. Psalms 119 and 161. Matter of fact, 160. Thy word is true from the beginning. So if thy word is true from the beginning and you trust in the word that is true from the beginning, you should be walking in truth and can't nobody get you off that then. Thy word is true from the beginning. So can't nobody offend you then? What, whatever you're doing and is lined up with the script, it's true. Can't nobody get you off of that? You crazy? Somebody going to make you feel bad for trusting in God and sticking with the book? Are you crazy? You don't understand how deep this goes. They're going to try to kill us for the word of God. Who cares about somebody's words or whatever? Who gives the? Who cares? Can they show you out the book? No. Shh, be quiet then. Don't let it, don't even let it get to you. That's why folks try to tell me what people done said. I don't care. Can they read it? Leave me alone. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. You walk in righteous judgments, and the judgments endure forever? Don't you think you're going to endure forever? You wouldn't want to lose that for anybody, would you? If somebody trying to make you upset or something, you're gonna let it, you're gonna lose it. You gotta keep just walk right. What the script say? Just can we go to back to the script? What the script say? What the script say? All right, all right then. Just walk right. Just walk straight. You have to slow down, relax, breathe, and, and think. We read the Bible every day, at least we should. So there's some scripture in there that can help me in this moment I'm in. So I can slow down and think. There's a scripture gonna float in my mind. And it's gonna say, all right, all right, yeah, you should, I should do that. All right, cool. You passing the test, because you just just walk right, man. What script can I? All right, boom. Just walk right. Just walk right. It's, it's real simple. Verse 160 again. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. So why folks persecuting? Folks persecuting you and stuff? What you meditating on? The word of God. You know what? They talking about you. Why are you talking about God? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Did you know that? Did you know that could happen? We reading it. We reading it. Everybody reading it together. I say it all the time. We are reading the Bible together. So if anybody has a problem, take them to one, Psalms 119 and 160. And then we just read 161. We'll read the next one too. I rejoice at that word as one that findeth great spoil. Wow. So this book like gold then. It's a treasure. Verse 163. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. This is what we want, really. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If you love the Lord, you wrapped in this law, when nobody got to say or anybody coming against you, it won't offend you. you they can't shake you. You can't, you can't, they can't shake you. That's, just, that's, if somebody's trying to shake you, or so always, somebody's always sending some type of words after you, who is that? That's Satan. Did you know that? Trying to get you to sin. Last week's lesson was, are you a, are you a device of Satan? Because Satan will use somebody, a user vessel, to get a righteous individual to sin against God. Did you know that? You had to go back and watch last week. The Lord, the Lord will, you're supposed to rely on the Lord, right? 
You know why? Because Satan going to bring somebody against you that's going to try to get you to sin against your creator. That's why the lesson this week, which was brought to you by the Spirit of God, because I can't come up with none of this, just walk right. Just walk right. And you know how to walk right? Just trust in the law. Just trust in the word of God. Because he said in the in the 142nd verse of the same chapter, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Then you go to John 17 and 17. He says, sanctify him through thy word. Thy word is true. The law, word, one and the same, both true. But if you love it, ain't nothing going to offend you. It say, it say, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. So even when people was coming, probably had something to say about uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and, uh, and Azariah, it didn't offend them. When Daniel heard that the declaration was signed, he went and prayed anyway. And folks were saying, bro, why you have to do that? You should have did something else. You should have hit. It didn't offend them. So let's go back to, because uh, he's just walking right. they just walking right. They trusted in the word of God. And if you don't believe it, you can go to Daniel and read it for yourself. First, uh, first, let's go back to First Timothy. Because the lesson is just walk right, man. Sis, bro, just walk right. First Timothy 4. Because we read in verse 8 of First Timothy 4. Uh, bodily exercise, that don't profit nothing. That profit little. But godliness, it profit in all things. To the point where it's going to profit you in this life and the next. So why don't you just walk right? This is verse 10 again. 1 Timothy 4 and 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Of course we're going to trust in the living God if he's the Savior of all men. Who cares what anybody got to say? Anybody can be offended at your servitude and trust in God. Who cares? He's the Savior. Don't you want to please him? Verse 11. So we know we're not tripping. It says what? These things command and teach. Oh my goodness, you can't make this stuff up. Ain't that what we're teaching right now? You can't make this stuff up. If you got a problem, you got a problem with this. This is in the Bible. There's no sheet. There's nothing written. There's no anything. This is a straight book. These things command and teach. Let's read the next verse. Let no man despise thy youth. Don't let nobody despise your youth, whether it's your age, period, or your, your tenure in the word. You could be youthful in the word, because that's why we call babes in Christ. That's why they say babes use milk. When you're talking to babies. So whether you all you young in age or young in the truth, it don't matter. Let no man despise our youth. If you're coming out the book, that's it. The Lord has a supreme, the word of God has supreme authority over anybody, no matter what age they are. If somebody come at me with the book and it say, what it say, it line up, it line up, then we go with it. I ain't going to say, man, how long you been in the word? Oh, two months. Oh, man, you probably don't know what it means. That's a recipe for disaster. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. Wow. You supposed to be an example of somebody that believe in God, don't you? So what time do you have anybody saying anything or doing anything when you're supposed to be an example of the believers? We have examples of believers in the Old Testament who was willing to die for the word, who was willing to be persecuted and suffer for the word and could have did something different. Let no man despise thy you, but be thou an example of the believers in word, the way you talk, in conversation, the way you walk, in charity, how you deal with others, in spirit, your mental fortitude, your mentality, in faith, in purity. What? You got to be pure? If we go to Proverbs 30, around verse 5 and 6, he said the word of God is pure. That's it. So he said in verse 12, let no man despise thy like you, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine. Excuse me. So exhortation is a form of word of wisdom Wednesday. It's going to exhort you until your teacher come on the Sabbath. You can't make this stuff up. We, everything we're trying to do, 
Everything we do is just lining up with the word of God. It can't, this, cannot be a, this cannot be bad. This can't be wrong. Can't be nothing wrong with this. So if anybody got something negative to say about it, they have the problem. You have to look at these individuals. Let's go into Joshua, the first chapter. Man, maybe you should not stop letting your uh, mind deceive your eyes. Joshua 1. Joshua 1. Joshua 1. Joshua 1 and 6. Joshua 1. Joshua 1 and 6. He said, be strong and of a good courage. We already seen why you got to be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. So you're going to have to be strong and courageous to do all that law? Yeah, because you're going to be, it's going to be opposition. People that live in wicked, they always got something to say about somebody that's living righteous. They always got something to say. Even outside of the Bible. You got to let you try to go start going to the gym and working out. Somebody going to have a joke or something for you. Somebody always hating on something. And it be their own issues. That's why you can't let it let you get off the you can't let what nobody think or say or what anybody do get you off the straight and narrow. Just walk straight. Just do it. Just walk with the word. Walk with the Lord. He said, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Even in the next life because you everybody going into the next. Did you know that? Everybody going to the next. If you want to prosper in the next, you better be strong and very courageous to do all the law that the that that the uh, that the Lord's servant Moses commanded you so that you will prosper. That's lining up with Deuteronomy 28. That's lining up with 1 Timothy 4, whereas godliness will profit you in this life and the next. So he said, turn out to the left hand or to the right. Just walk straight. Just walk straight. Let's go into Proverbs 4. When you let all this emotion, you no know, stuff get involved, you will get, you will get off. Because Satan operates with the flesh. But we don't walk after the flesh, do we? We walk after the spirit. What's the spirit? Word of God. Who is, who is the word of God? Jesus himself. You can read it in 1 John 1 on your own. John himself said we handled the word of life. You know who that is? Jesus. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. The lesson is just walk straight, right? Just walk straight. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. And verse uh, verse uh, 10. He said, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. Of course, straight and narrow. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight. You know what that means? Ain't nobody going to have to tell you nothing. Ain't nobody have to straighten you out. Because you're already walking in the right way. If somebody got something to say, it's just blabbering. Because you're walking with God. You're walking in the way of God. So it's just blabbering. That's all it is. When thou goest, thyself shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Verse 18. It says, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So as you continue to walk with God and study the word daily, your path is going to get easier or brighter or more righteous every single day until the perfect day, till you perfect it. You don't want to lose this. If you keep straight, just walk straight. You're walking right into perfection. Can't, you going to let somebody get you, off, get you upset or something? Is this a joke? The stuff people say, I promise you, the stuff that be coming back to me, I'm like, is this a joke? Is this a joke? 
Because I'll be feeling Jesus when he said in Psalms 35, they laid things to my charge I knew not. I'm like, man, I'll be, in the, I'll be like, man, you know what you can do? Next time you get ready to tell me something, just don't say nothing. Because you got to think about what you're talking to me about. You really do. He said, but the path of the justice has the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend my, uh, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. If you don't keep the word of God in your heart, you're going to have these other issues of life coming out, which is all emotional and fleshly stuff. Put away from thee, verse 24, put away from thee a froward mouth. Somebody, you take it out of your mouth and somebody coming with you some, with, with, some, with, some, with some bad stuff, get away, put it away. Man, leave me alone. You should be able to say that. But if you're scared, you're not going to say that. And you got to stop being scared. You got to stand up for the word of God. You got to stand up for what's right. Somebody coming to you with some forward stuff, tell them to leave you alone. It's funny we have no, it's funny we get in the word, we didn't have no problem telling our family members off. But when we get into the word and we hear some same, some of that same forward behavior, we let it slide. That's funny to me. But it ain't funny to God. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips, Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Your ways ain't going to be established if you don't ponder what path you're on. And it ain't going to happen if you're not reading for yourself either. Nobody should be able to tell you nothing. You should be able to read it too. Turn not to the right hand. Nor to the left, remove thy foot from evil. And you can read in 1 Kings 13 when somebody was on a straight and narrow, has strict directions from God and let somebody tell them that God spoke to them and they got thrown off. But what, they, what God spoke to them wasn't what God had told them in the first, right? So he should have kept walking straight, but he didn't. Let's go into 1 Corinthians 13 and we'll, we'll wrap it up here. I told you it's going to be short and sweet. And it is sweet because I feel it coming out of me. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. This is why you got to be sincere in your walk with God. You got to be true. You can't fake this thing. You're going to get exposed. Because the minute somebody come against you with something, you're going to leave. Or you're going to be offended or something. If you're trusting in God, shouldn't nobody be offending you? And I said this was the last, did I say this was the last script? No, this ain't the last script. But 1 Corinthians 13 and verse uh, 1. He said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. If you want to, you can preach and talk and have good lessons and all that all day. But if your walk don't match up with what you're talking about, you just making noise. I didn't make this up. We reading it together. You just making noise. He said in verse two, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. That's sincere love. Charity, sincere, unwarranted love unsolicited love. You just love everybody. You ain't partial or nothing. It's just genuine, natural, godly love. He said, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I have given my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. You probably wonder, why am I reading this for this next verse? Charity suffereth long. So it's a lot. It'll deal with a lot. Remember, we read in Psalms 119 and verse 165, that grace, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing going to offend them. So, of course, you're going to be long-suffering. You're just taking whatever comes. You're just dealing with it, whatever. Oh, something new this week? Okay. 
whatever. Oh, something new the next week? Okay, whatever. Because you just walking straight. You're not offended. You're dealing with God. You're not offended. He said, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. So you ain't envying nobody. You ain't envying nothing. You don't care what nobody got. Oh, congratulations. Oh, you got something new? Congratulations. You ain't over there trying to emulate and get it or hate somebody for it. He said, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It ain't proud. It's not puffed up. It ain't trying to rule over nobody. It's trying to be big boss hog. It ain't trying to do none of that. Because it say, don't bond it, not, it say, it, charity bond him not itself. It's not puffed up. So if you got air in your chest, if you puffed up and you you the big bad wolf and all that, this this you then. This exposing whoever it is. I didn't write none of this. But we showing you why you need to just keep, you just need to keep, you need to just walk straight. You have to be sincere in your walk with God because you got to answer to him. Nobody has an answer to each other. You got to answer to God. So why wouldn't I walk straight? That's going to please him. I don't care what nobody's saying. I got to answer to this guy. You see this line behind me? Now that ain't him and I ain't saying it represents him. You think a body's going in this living room every morning and bow to the line. No. Nah. But we know he's the line of the tribe of Judah and he's coming back like one. So don't get it twisted. We answer to God. That's it. Bottom line. He said, verse five, does not be, behave itself unseemly. Like, man, you don't end up looking at the individual. I'm like, man, what? That ain't right. The heck? I don't think that's right. I don't think you should be doing that. What? It does not be self, behave itself unseemly. Seek of not her own. Is not easily provoked. That's the one we wanted right there. It's not easily provoked. You ain't going to be offended. You have great peace because you love the law of God. You ain't going to be offended. So, of course, you're not going to be easily provoked. Because you don't, it is bouncing off. It's bouncing off. You're just trying to walk straight. It said, it's not easily provoked. Think of no evil. Evil rejoiceth, rejoiceth not in iniquity. It rejoices not in iniquity. So if somebody's sinning and doing wicked stuff, you ain't over there high-fiving nobody or nothing. You checking that. But if you're doing it too, it's hard to check them. So this ain't for whoever doing that. But we know true charity rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Oh, you found some. You, you starting to understand this word, huh? You have been reading for yourself? Good job. You starting to, you want to do the Lord showing you stuff out of the word, word of God. Let me see that. I might can learn from you. Because the Lord, you're going to use vessels. That's how he operates. And he don't have to show me nothing that he shows somebody else. It don't, it don't have to be that way. We have a whole Bible with prophets that have been showed different things at different times. And some at the same time. You think they didn't co collaborate? Some of these prophets were together at the same time. You can read Ezra when Ezra came out. Ezra and them came out. It was Zechariah and Haggai, I believe, together. So there you go. But he said, charity is not easily provoked. Because the, so the lesson is, just walk straight. Just walk straight. Shouldn't, you shouldn't be easily provoked to get off that straight and narrow. All right, it's 850. Let's read one more. First, uh... First uh, Timothy, back to Timothy. I should have did it like Bowie did it. We're going to be in and out of Timothy all morning, all evening. And that's love. That ain't no, I mean, you might folks, folks so crazy. They're like, oh, yeah, let me send a clip of that to uh, Bowie or something. No, that's love. That's love. Uh, I think first, did I say first Timothy? Hold on. Is it first Timothy? No, I think it's second Timothy. I think we're in second Timothy. Hold on. See, that's why that's why I don't be talking like that. That's why I'm be talking that much. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. Peace everybody on, on the on the on the uh on the stream. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 1. He says, 
Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Wow. Be strong in the grace of Christ Jesus. So you got to be strong in this. You can't be shaken, easily shaken, easily provoked. You can't be easily offended. You're not being strong in the grace of the Lord then. Because the Lord went through all of this that we're going through. He was not offended. He didn't start changing and doing stuff against God. None of that. Man, because people are going to talk about you regardless, man. It don't really matter. It shouldn't affect you. You shouldn't be offended so easy. He said, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Wow. So if the Lord show you something, you should be able to teach it to anybody and everybody, right? No matter what. That's what you're supposed to do. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. Wow. So after you start teaching people stuff and all that, you could can, you can be having to deal with some type of persecution or something. He said, thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Wow. We are in a spiritual war. We are in a spiritual battlefield. Why would you be concerned with some fleshly. Why would you? You just, just walk straight. That's all you got to do. You should be wrapped in the word. You know, wrapped in the word. When nothing get in, you wrapped in it. You just walking straight. Everything just bouncing off. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, really? Cool. Just walking straight. And you, you endure hardness as a good soldier. He said, no man that war. If you're in a war, you don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. You don't get emotional and all that. He said that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So you walk straight so you can be pleasing to God who have called you to be a good soldier and that you may enter into eternal life. Because that's what it's all about. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Peace out.